Hello, let's discuss cell junctions and extracellular metrics. Cell junctions and extracellular metrics. My name is Dr. Mende. So this is an overview. Remember, um, the uh, body is composed of uh, many cells which form tissues and the extracellular matrix is just a complex of macromolecules usually secreted by the cell and they exist outside the cell. So they contain proteins, glycosaminoglycans and proteoglycans. So we have specialized extracellular matrix that contains connective um, um, tissue and tissues are usually formed from the connection between cell to cell and connection between the cell to the, the, the matrix. So this is an example. As you can see here, this is uh, the GIT. You can see the epithelium, connective tissue, the muscle, then back to epithelium, which is serosa. So how usually are cells organized? So cells are organized, um, and uh, in between the cells, you have junctions, and you have different types of junctions, tight junctions, adhering junctions, desmosomes, focal adhesions, hemidesmosomes, and gap junctions. Then outside the cells, we have extracellular matrix, which contains macromolecules. These are usually synthesized by the cell, and they include hyaluronan, agrican, we have collagen, and fibronectin. So we'll first discuss the cell junctions. These are, they mainly form the lateral specialization of um, cells. So we have occluding junctions. These seal cells together into sheep. So occluding junctions seal cells together into sheep and they form an impermeable barrier. Then anchoring junctions attach cells to other cells or the extracellular matrix. So occluding junction is cell to cell. Anchoring junction is either cell to cell or cell to extracellular matrix. And in this case, they are able to provide mechanical support. Then we have communicating junctions. These allow exchange of chemical or electrical information between the cells. So occluding junctions, for example, we have tight junctions, which are mainly in vertebrates. The anchoring junctions ensure cell-to-cell -cell or cell-to-matrix communication. So cell-to-cell, -cell, you have adherence junction, and cell-to-matrix, you have the focal adhesions. So these contain, or rather um, attach, onto filament, uh, actin filaments. Then we have intermediate filaments attaching onto anchoring junctions. For the cell-to-cell, -cell, we have the desmosomes, and the cell-to-matrix junctions, we have the hemidesmosomes. Then under communicating junctions, we mainly have the gap junctions in vertebrae. So as you can see here, okay, this is the gut of uh, lumen of the gut, and this is one cell, this is another cell, and you can appreciate the membrane of two cells together, and this is a tight junction in between them. So the tight junction, uh, each cell possesses an integral membrane protein that spans through the membrane, and this usually binds a similar protein in the adjacent uh, cell, forming a well. So as you can see, you have clouding here and clouding here. So together they form tight junction proteins. Anchoring junctions, where you have integral proteins that connect onto cell cytoskeleton. So integral proteins that connect into cytoskeleton. This is a cytoskeleton within the cell. So this is one cell, this is another cell. So you have integral proteins that are able to connect um, the cell onto the cytoskeleton and that forms your anchoring junction. So you can see your anchoring junctions here. And the anchoring junctions, you have um, integral proteins that connect the cytoskeleton to another cell or to extracellular matrix. So this is your uh, integral protein or a transmembrane protein, and this is your intracellular anchor protein. The anchoring junctions are linked onto the cytoskeleton, whether myofilaments or intermediate filaments, and they're able to connect the membrane protein receptor, which is usually attached onto another protein. So it could be attached onto the cell membrane or attached onto the extracellular matrix. So we have the cell 
cell to cell junction and cell to matrix junction. So cell to cell we have adhering junctions such as catherines and desmosomes, which contains desmoglanes and desmocolins. And then cell attaching cell to the matrix, we have focal adhesions such as the integrins and hemidesmosomes, which also contain integrins as their proteins. So adhering junctions connect onto um, actin filaments, desmosin connect into intermediate. While cell to matrix, the focal adhesions connect onto actin filaments, while hemidesmosomes onto the intermediate filaments. So you can see here the catherines attaching onto the actin filaments. So catherines and desmosomes aid with cell to cell connections, which are mediated by catherines, and these receptors are able to extend out from the cell and bind other catherines. So you can see the catherines have extended outside the cell to bind other catherines. They participate in formation of adherence junctions and these are usually under the cell membrane. So you can see the adhesion belt. This is one cell, this is another cell. So they're under the cell membrane and contractile fiber of microfilaments usually connect to cell membrane proteins called the catherines. This is your cell membrane and you have catherines around here and the contractile actin filaments attaching onto the catherines. So they surround the cell and you're able to form a belt. The desmosomes are usually, um, as you can see, sorry, as you can see here, desmosomes contain desmoglein and desmocolins and catherines usually form localized spot connections and they can attach onto intermediate filaments via desmosomes. So these are your desmosomes containing desmoglanes and desmocolins. Again, look at your catherines here, and these catherines are going to attach onto cytoplasmic uh, filaments or the cytoskeleton. Then cell to extracellular matrix attachment, you have focal adhesions and hemidesmosomes. So, the cytoskeletal fibers can attach onto transmembrane receptors such as integrins or attach onto extracellular matrix components. So you have focal adhesions that use microfilaments and hemidesmosomes that usually use intermediate filaments. So if you're to look at this, this is your extracellular space. This is the cytoplasm. So you have your extracellular matrix proteins that are going to connect onto the actin um, filaments via the uh, integral sub, uh, subunits. Gap junctions allow exchange of electrical or chemical signals. The gap junctions are actually composed of proteins on the cell membrane that will form channels to allow small molecules to pass. The gap junctions have subunits which we call channels and these are connexins. Connexins usually are assembled together to make connections and the connections form two cells that join together to make a gap junction. So the subunits of a gap junction are connexins and they're assembled together to form connections which from two cells join together to form gap junction. So the gap junctions ensure rapid communication between neighboring cells such as cardiomyocytes to ensure synchronized contraction of the heart. They also help with communication beyond the nerve system, e.g. hepatocytes beyond sympathetic nerves need to be informed to produce glucose from glycogen. Gap junctions also help in embryogenesis because they help to form specific tissue with coupled group of cells. So these are the gap junctions. You can see the connections, two connections will merge to form a gap junction. So these are connections and these are connections. Okay. So regulation of connectivity. When might a cell want to alter its connections with other cells? And how do cells alter these connections? So they're able to alter the profile of cytoskeletal connection, as well as alter the receptors and the extracellular matrix. They also alter the binding affinity of the receptors. So many are calcium dependent and are affected by protein kinases. So these are tight junctions. These are adhering junctions that they are onto um, the proteins within the cell, like the myofilaments, such as actin. These are the desmosomes that contain um, desmoglanes and desmocolin proteins. These are gap junctions that contain connections and they are um, pores that allow some molecules to pass through. These are hemidesmosomes. They're usually on the basal surface of the cell. So tight junctions seal neighboring cells together. 
So you seal a cell to a cell, so you prevent leakage between molecules, uh, leakage of molecules between the cell. At the adhering junction, they join actin bundle on one cell with a similar bundle of a neighboring cell. So tight junction, cell to cell to prevent leakage. At the adhering junction, bind uh, protein actin molecules from one. You can see actin on one cell with actin on another cell. So that's at the adhering junction. Desmosomes join intermediate filaments in one cell to those of a neighbor. So these are intermediate filaments of one cell join to that of the neighboring cell. Then gap junctions allow passage of small molecules, which are usually water-soluble ions and molecules. So gap junctions will allow, they are paused, so they'll allow molecules from one cell to another. Then hemidesmosomes, they anchor intermediate filaments onto the basal lamina. They anchor the intermediate filament onto the basal lamina. So these are hemidesmosomes onto basal lamina. So these are the intermediate filaments. Again, these are your desmosomes, intermediate filaments of one cell to another. These are uh, adhering junctions, actin of one cell to another, tight junction cell to cell to prevent leakage, and gap junctions, of course, will allow molecules to pass through. So again, that's the same thing we've discussed, tight junction, adhering junction, actin to actin, desmosomes, intermediate filament to intermediate filament, gap junctions, hemidesmosomes, intermediate filament being linked onto the basal lamina. So the extracellular matrix is a network of proteins glycosaminoglycans and other proteoglycans in the extracellular space. So the, it's usually a matrix secreted by the cells and mainly the fibroblasts. And we see extracellular matrix in connective tissue, in cartilage, bone, basal lamina, and so on and so forth. So this is actually the structure of the basal uh, lamina and it contains different proteins such as integrins, laminins, and collagen type 4. So connective tissue, usually is found under the epithelium. It contains collagen and elastic fibers, as well as neurovascular structures and cells such as fibroblasts and extracellular matrix proteins such as hyaluronan, proteoglycans, and glycoproteins. Again, in the muscle, you have muscle cells and connective tissue around it. In the epithelium, just beneath the epithelium, there's connective tissue and in many other areas. So the extracellular matrix contains glycoproteins or proteins, these are co-translational inputs that define physical properties, and usually they're able to bind combinations of macromolecules in the cell membrane, such as integrins and other extracellular components. So these proteins include collagen, elastin, fibronectin, and laminin. So the proteins can provide elastic properties, such as elastin, that will help to um, elasticity, so it allow stretch and relaxation because of the cross linkages. Then we have glycosaminoglycans that define physical property and usually they contain repeating sugar and amino sugar units and a good example is N-acetylglucosamine and N-acetylgalactosamine so they occur in long strings and often attach onto proteins examples of glycosaminoglycans we have hyaluronan, chondroitin sulfate, heparan sulfate and keratin sulfate glycosaminoglycans usually attract water so they have a hydroxyl group that forms um, hydrogen bonds and the many negative charges usually attract sodium and this induce an osmotic movement of water so they form hydrated gels that usually resist compression and this makes them useful especially in joints so remember the joints have a lot of uh, they're carrying weight so to minimize that you need this hydrated gel so it's the hydroxyl portion of the glycosaminoglycan that is able to attract water so that you maintain the osmotic movement of water and make the gel remain hydrated. So uh, proteoglycans contain proteins in glycosaminoglycans and these also define physical property. They are synthesized in the Golgi apparatus and um, they also bind hormones. Good examples are the agricans and the decorans which are in cartilage. So this is fibronectin, fibrillar, laminin, tenacin, collagen for agrican, hyaluron and these are all extracellular matrix proteins. Hyaluronan contains glucuronic acid and N-acetylglucosamine, and it's able to also attract water and fill spaces between the cell with non-compressible gel. Some cells are actually able to secrete it and isolate themselves from other cells. So that's hyaluronan. Then we also have agrican that consists of core protein with glycosaminoglycans, and the agrican's uh, protein is large but binds on glycosaminoglycans. Then, of course, there is collagen. 
which is a common uh, fiber within the extracellular matrix. So this is how collagen is formed. 